Hello everyone, Mystic here. Welcome back to Manhattan Time. Last time, we saved everyone at the Alpine Skyline from an illness that we may or may not have been the cause of. This time, we're going to be heading back to the Skyline and completing the free rifts here. So, let's go in the free roam. We already know that the locations are fairly easy to discover thanks to the images we were shown. One of them is in the central island that we land right by, so we can go to it whenever we desire. The other two are by... Let the music play. The other two are by the Twilight Bell and the Windmill. The rift is literally over there. You can go to it whenever you desire. So for now, let's go to the Twilight Bell first. As it is very easy to reach the path to it. In order to climb, once again, we must use the Dweller's Mask. However, now that we have the Mad Hatter Badge, or the Fast Hatter Badge, we can almost rapidly do any Dweller Parkour. It's exceptionally easy. As we climb up once again, just remember, if you get given a, um, a Dweller Bell, make sure that you do use it, because typically it is better to use that than your own Dweller Mask. Now we go to the bell itself, where we saw the rift is. And there it is, just to the right. So let's go. As you can see, this one has a lot of the big goats walking about, and it very much uses the Dweller Bells and Dweller Platforms. However, most of this parkour does seem fairly simple and straightforward. However, do be cautious of the big boys here. They will very easily knock you over. And we're done. A very quick and simple rift. Let's see what we get out of this machine. That is a free star item, so we're taking it, obviously. The free star kid's hat is striped, and on the bow tie is a rose. Have a look at our new hat. Very stylish, no matter the colour scheme. Trust me. 
let's pull up to show that Captain of the Sea. Margin of the Night. The default colour scheme. And back to R1. Now, we've won the free done. Let's go to the windmill. As you can see, the kid's hat is pointing us somewhere, but as we've done all of the timepieces here, it doesn't really matter. Is it saying to head to the birdhouse? However, we kind of do want to take this route, so then we can use the ice platform. Now that we're up higher, Over to the windmill. You want to take the route on the left, I believe. And then you want to climb up. As from what we saw the image, very close to where the windmill is, is in fact our rift that we're after. The yeah, area is a bit hard to remember and a bit hard to follow, but it will be over along this way, as you can see the windmill pretty clearly. However, you did also notice there was what appeared to be a cat on it. So if we head over to here actually, as this is the cat town, do a little bit of parkour, should be one of the higher up homes. More specifically, as you can hear it now, this home. There it is. Right by the horn too. So, let's go. Most of this looks like normal and very easy parkour. However, don't be fooled. And that's why. There are invisible cats. You can tell where they are when they're invisible because of the little paw prints that they make. As you can see... 
by the looks of it, we need to complete what appears to be a miniaturized gauntlet. Best bet is to, of course, kill off every one of them. There. Once they're all dead, you're able to very easily climb up. And there you go. And we got a remix. Another remix. And a one star hat flare. All that's left, within the skyline, is the purple time rift. And we know where that is. Considering we've seen it every single time we've landed. So, um, here we go. The location of the purple rift is just to the right of where we spawn. Let's go. And beginning it, this seems like a very strange place. And over here is our picture. There's only five. Making this possibly the shortest of all the picture books. If you look around, you can see that there's more or less nothing else here. Here we go. You can also see that, in terms of how many rooms there are, this is by far the smallest of the rifts as well. Looking around once more, can't see anything that would resemble what we're looking for in terms of picture books. However, if you saw what I saw, this little bit down here, you can easily get it. Over here is our rift vault. In order to move on. And it seems like the big um, goats are here too. And zooming out around here you can see there's nothing. So, let's progress. Yes, there are cats here too. And as you can see, thanks to us having the best badge set up, while we might not actually bring anything in towards us anymore, we do have the ability to avoid full damage, along with possibly the better ability 
the ability to use our hat abilities as rapid as possible. Looking around here, as you always want to check everywhere you can, it appears to be there's nothing else we can do. As it appears to me that there's nothing else actually available. So, let's go to the next zone. It should be fairly obvious that at least one of these areas will contain more than one page. As there's only another three areas, including our timepiece area, and we're missing three pages. You always will find every page before you enter the timepiece area. Meaning, we're a page short. So either this area, or the next, will contain two pieces. Or, perhaps this one will even contain three. Look around here, can't see anything. We hit the tree up there, a bit unfortunate, but... Come over here. We see that there is nothing down here. However, there was another rift pond in the waterfall. Now that we're back up here, we collect another piece for our exit. But, seems to be we've seen no picture book pieces. To most people this will be pretty concerning because that would mean that all three would need to be in the next zone. But I can assure you, you want to make sure that you check every little nook and cranny. Well you never know where something could be. As up on top of this, which you could only reach via that route, was our picture book piece. And up here, you can see that there's nothing else. So, on we go to the next zone. This zone is very reminiscent of numerous areas. You can see there's giant windmill pits everywhere, there's birdhouses, and of course, the main notoriety, the area is very reminiscent of the Twilight Bell. You always want to make sure that you got everything. Thanks to this area being reminiscent of the Twilight Bell, this gives possibly some of the most complex spacing. As now that everything's meshed, that includes all of their traits. Meaning that there's Dweller Platforms, there's Birdhouse Parkour, Waterfalls, and as you can see down here, it's a picture book piece. There is jumping through the birdhouses with explosive eggs. And moving gears.
Okay. As well as, if you're questioning why I'm constantly falling, half the time it's easier to actually fall and die than have to run all the way back to particular different routes. So as you can see, we're still missing one picture book piece. And we've already opened up the vault to the next area. You can also see you can save yourself with every now and then different bits of this map. As it will very much overlap itself. The price to pay when it's a mesh of everything combined. Now, what we're doing is trying to find our final picture book piece. But, as you can see, there it is. Now with every piece collected, and the vault already open, let's go get our time piece. So far, with all of our purple rifts, we've found every piece of the picture book, except for Battle of the Birds with one. However, luckily, I'm very capable of filling in for that one individual piece. Also, as you can see, we can't go back to that platform and pick up the one bomb that jumped over there. But... 38 rifts and timepiece missions done. The Twilight Ascent. The goat people used to follow the stars. And eventually they found mountains where they could worship those very stars. They climbed as high as they could all the way up till they reached the top. From there, they worshipped, creating bells and the embryos from the Twilight Bell, until eventually they too became the stars and nature all around them. In terms of the hat flare, we only got one star, and again one star, and it's the same one all the time, but it's a time stop hat design. Before any DLCs came out, the time stop hat has no designs, meaning this is the first design for the time stop hat you could obtain. And speaking of time stop, we have one other thing we're going to do. If you remember, there is a mission all the way back in Mafia Town that we couldn't do because we were missing something. What we were missing was the time stop hat. So now, the mission's completely allowed. Cheating the race. To make this mission even easier, you will want to have the ability to use the Fast Hatter badge. As the timepiece is going to be over there. And we've got a race this Mafia Man all the way to it. <laughs> Rockets are fast, and if Mafia on Rocket, Mafia is fast. Fastest man alive! Little child want to race fastest man alive? Mafia stole timepiece from HQ. 
If you win, Mafia give it to you. That's racy chicken. Mafia not sure Mafia survive this, but at least Mafia die as fastest man alive. That is very true. He most likely would die from this because of the explosion. And as you can see, the Mafia man would 100% outspeed us. If we couldn't slow down time. However, even with time stop, you still want to move pretty quickly. As that rocket is exceptionally fast. However, once you get it, it is a very quick mission. And just like that, all four of the chapters before DLC are complete. This leaves the finale chapter and the two DLC chapters to do. In order for the game to stop doing that and revealing to me the attic, we're going to quickly sort out the attic ourselves. As you can see, there are three things that this eye is watching. One in a dweller box, one above an ice platform, and one inside a box. As you can guess, you need to have, at minimum, the dweller's mask, the ice hat, and the brewing hat. And then you can unlock the pathway to the attic. But, within this room, there is some things of notoriety. Toolboxes, barrels, chains, wardrobe, books, furniture, chests, a clock, and a globe. However, this globe does not reveal what looks like Earth. You can easily assume that this globe is revealing what Hackett's home looks like. Her planet. And there are even more chests scattered around. So. While I would say that we carry on into Chapter 5, the finale is actually classified as Chapter 5. So, instead of going to Chapter 5, we'll be going to Chapter 6. As you can see, we need 300 of our palms to fix that little stand. And then if we come back over here, and you remember there was one down in here by chapter 7 this one needed 250 down here we're gonna make this relic this one is for chapter 6 Meaning, our final relic is Chapter 7's, in which we will need 300 ponds to fix the podium for. So, next time, on a hat in time, we'll go ahead and see what the Arctic Cruise is all about, as we finally delve into some newer content beyond the original game. This is Mystic, and goodbye.